Barkley has everything. The Baltimore Colts have three times consecutively been the AFC Eastern Division champions with receptions by Lydell Mitchell like that and the throwing, of course, by Burt Jones and runs by Lydell Mitchell like that. He gained over 1,100 yards last year, but now Lydell Mitchell is with the San Diego Chargers and Burt Jones was struck down by injury in the final preseason game on this very play. Smothered by the pass rush, he suffered a separated shoulder. So the Colts appear to be in disarray. I asked Coach Ted Marsha Broda about it. Teddy, Monday Night Football begins tonight. The Colts have the unhappy task of facing the Super Bowl champion Dallas Cowboys without the injured Burt Jones and without the departed Lydell Mitchell. Thus, it's been said, your team is in chaos. True or not true? Well, definitely not true, Howard. I'm with my ball club every day, and, and we've had an excellent week of practice uh, in preparing for Dallas, and I feel our ball club is ready to play tonight. Mitchell left under, frankly, ugly circumstances. He had charged the management with racism. Was there anything to that charge as far as you're concerned? Nothing as far as I'm concerned, Howard, because, as I said, our ball club, uh, in the three years I've been here, we've played extremely well. They have done the job uh, week in and week out, and that's exactly the way that they've practiced this year, and I'm sure that they're going to do the same thing this, uh, this coming season. Tonight, you must rely on a young quarterback named Kirkland. Is it remotely possible that he can do the job? Howard, this week in practice, I've been extremely pleased with Mike. It's Mike's first start ever in the National Football League, but he's picked up things and done things much better than what I had antis anticipated in practice. So I'm hopeful this will carry over into the ball game. So you think you can give him a good game and maybe even win it? Howard, I've judged my ball club on the way they've practiced during the week, and we've had an excellent practice session, so that's my feeling going into the game. Ted Marsha Broder on the Baltimore Colts who go against the Super Bowl champion Dallas Cowboys tonight. Monday night football is back. 20 seconds to air. Stand by all cameras. Stand by in videotape. Stand by slow-mo. Stand by open your mics on the field. Stand by in graphics. Ready with your opening supers. Stand by the announcers in the booth, please. Roll tape. Three, two, one. Take tape. from Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas, the season premiere of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. The AFC Eastern Division champion Baltimore Colts against the Super Bowl champion Dallas Cowboys. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Datsun. We are driven to give you a year-end deal on the greatest economy of all, a Datsun quality. And by the Miller Brewing Company, brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Hello again, everyone. It's so good to be back for this, the ninth year, believe it or not, of Monday Night Football. And, of course, Teddy Marsha Broda probably set our storyline for the evening. We'll get to that in a moment. I just want to say that we think we've got the greatest year yet of Monday Night Football, and it's not an on-air promotion. Let me explain why. An expanded season, 16 Monday night games, four specials, three Sunday night games, one Thursday night games, games that have matchups like these. Pittsburgh at Los Angeles, Denver in a reprise at Oakland, and New England at Oakland, and that's bound to be a stormy one. About tonight, and Teddy Marsha Broda setting the storyline, well, we've established it for you. The Colts, despite Teddy's disclaimers, appear to be in total disarray. They've lost 5,000 yards in a single season. 11 men with the Colts a year ago, gone. Lydell Mitchell, Raymond Chester, and others. Frank will enumerate more even on that. And so, what looked to be the richest kind of opening game may not be that because of the absence of Burt Jones. We had an augury yesterday, perhaps, 
The Jets beating Miami, smothering them because of the absence of the great quarterback, Greasy, taking nothing away from the excellence of the Jets. And Kansas City beating Cincinnati because of and taking nothing away from Marvin Levy's great effort with his team, taking nothing away from Kansas City, the absence of Kenny Anderson contributing. A further problem, Dallas hasn't lost an opening day game since 1964. They lost that game with a quarterback who is back where he belongs. Dandy Don Meredith. Absolutely. Against St. Louis as well as right. It was an easy end to the whole season. We're going to set him up for it. Something like that. Marshall Broder actually hasn't lost an opening day game since he's been with Baltimore. This is his fourth season. But he may be in for it tonight because this is the first time as long as I've known Tom Landry that he sits there and he says, Tom, what's wrong? And he has to think a while before he can come up with something because there ain't not much wrong down here right now. They've got it really pretty well together. At least as good as they were last year at Super Bowl champs and maybe a little bit better. Four rookies make the team. So I think that the Cowboys, uh, they're off to a good start. They've had a fairly good preseason. Uh, he has said, well, we haven't run as well as I'd like. Well, he's going to get a shot to do that tonight. Baltimore last year was 25th out of 28 teams against the run. So I imagine we'll see Dallas run a little bit tonight. The thing I'm pleased with that Tom... In my opinion, after two Super Bowls and a great career down here, has now moved himself into position to become a legend. Now, to really be a legend, you've got to have a one-liner, something like, uh, I shall return, or I never met a man I didn't like, or, well, I don't know, winning is everything. Well, Tom has come up with it. Tom's line to be a legend is, you can't smile and think at the same time. Now, I think that's going to do it, Frank. What do you think? That's where I missed the whole thing, man. I was smiling too much. Welcome back, Don. And they still love you in Dallas. They were crawling all over him coming into Texas Stadium tonight. Good to have you back, partner. Good to be back to you. Thank you. Howard and Baltimore, I'm sure they don't feel it's too good to be here because they're in a whole lot of trouble. Howard mentioned some of the players. Lydell Mitchell gone. Uh, Bird Jones injured out for who knows how long. Bill Troop is backup quarterback out. And they're starting a youngster named Mike Kirkland. Now, Mike Kirkland, if you haven't heard of him, don't feel bad because I haven't heard of him much either coming into tonight. He's a three-year man out of Arkansas. He was six out of 24 in preseason, has never thrown a regular NFL pass. And to complicate matters, David Taylor, the regular left tackle for the Baltimore Colts, he's out of that lineup too, maybe for the season with a broken ankle. And he has a substitute in, the, in there tonight for Mississippi, a two-year man. And Wade Griffin is going to really get initiated tonight because he's up against Harvey Martin and Harvey Martin you might remember they call him a manster or something down here but he led the NFL in quarterback sacks so Griffin's going to be in a problem and if he has a problem well young Mike Kirkland has got a major problem tonight a lot of trouble for the Baltimore Colts but many times we've seen teams come back against adversity and play great football we hope so frankly we'll be back with the kickoff there's a sellout crowd, a late sellout crowd here in Texas Stadium, Irving, Texas. The Baltimore Colts against the Dallas Cowboys, a game that we anticipated would be a tremendous football game. They played 30-27 two years ago in a great battle between Roger Staubach and quarterback Burt Jones. And, of course, we've already told you the players that are missing for the Baltimore Colts, Lydell Mitchell, a multiple thousand-yard gainer over the past three years. Burt Jones out with the separation for they don't know how long. Bill Troop, his backup, is also out with a shoulder injury. And this man is healthy, and this man, healthy, is quite a quarterback. He had a tremendous year last year. He's had a tremendous preseason, and he is looking to get off to a good start tonight. Dallas has won the toss. There are the two men dropping deep. Number 86 is Butch Johnson. Dennis Thurman, a rookie from the University of Southern California, is back there, number 32. And set to kick off for Baltimore is Tony Lenhart. A lot of excitement here in Dallas. The Super Bowl champion Dallas Cowboys looking for an unprecedented third Super Bowl are kicking off their season right now. It will be Butch Johnson from his own end zone. And Johnson barrels out to the 20-yard line, coughs it up. And Baltimore has got and it. And Baltimore appears to have recovered. Baltimore hustling down there was number 86, that's the number one draft pick, Reese McCall, and Baltimore's in good position. Look at it again, Butch Johnson had to make a decision, he took it out, he carried it loosely, bobbled it, and Reese McCall, the number one pick, makes the recovery for Baltimore. Johnson is so eager to make good that he made a mistake. You don't run a ball back from the end zone unless you're absolutely certain in your own mind you can get past that 20. But Butch has lost his job to the sensational Tony Hill, so he was over eager. You saw the lineup, the key player, Mike Kirkland, third-year man out of Arkansas. This will be his first snap ever in an NFL game. Quick handoff, and it goes to Roosevelt Leakes, the four-year veteran out of Texas. 
and Lakes gets about two or three yards. It'll be second down and seven. Defensively, and they're familiar names to all you football fans, across that front four for the Dallas Cowboys, Harvey Martin, Randy White, Jethro Pugh, Ed Jones, the linebackers. In the middle, Bob Brunick, the key spot for Tom Landry and his defense. Outside linebackers, a sensational outfit. Athlete is number 56, Tom Henderson. D.D. Lewis is the weak side linebacker. Second down and seven. The ball at the 21-yard line. You saw the defensive secondary. And the hub on. Colley, and McCauley is met and met hard. Number 79, Harvey Martin. D.D. Lewis reading the run. Closed it down. No game. Maybe a foot. It'll be third and long. It's a whole new thing for Don McCauley, the Long Island boy. It was the number one draft choice of the Baltimore Colts nine years ago or eight years ago. He's the spot man, short yardage guy. But now, would you believe he's not only in there as a regular running back, but he's a fine player, but he could be another John Mack. If Kirkland gets hurt, McCauley becomes the quarterback. Kirkland passing down. Out to the right is Dowdy, 35. Roger Carr to the left. Between them, they've got five passes in preseason. They haven't played that much or that well. Draw play. Draw play to Roosevelt Leagues. Far short of the first down. And Baltimore playing it very conservatively. As you might suspect, with a quarterback, basically a rookie who's never seen NFL action. Now, Tony Lindhart, fourth down and five, the ball resting at the 20 yard line. Good observation, Frank. Obviously, it's Marsha Broda's game plan to play very conservatively with the young quarterback, try and rely on his defense to hang in the game and seize whatever breaks they can get. Lindhart about to kick, and as you know, Dandy. He has not had a good preseason. He hasn't, and I don't really agree with that philosophy of playing that conservative, but we can talk about that in a little while, too. Lenhart. No good. Oh, boy. Tony Lenhart off a big year. Misses a tip shot from 30 yards out. It remains scoreless. We'll be back at a loud, noisy Texas stadium right after this. The Cowboys offensive unit on the field, a 30-yard miss by Tony Linhart, the Pro Bowl kicker last year. There is the offensive unit. Roger Staubach, Tony Dorsey, Robert Newhouse back there. Wide receivers, Drew Pearson, Tony Hill, who has apparently beaten out Golden Richards as one wide receiver, the second-year man out of Stanford, the tight end, the big man, number 89, Billy Joe Dupree. Jay Saldi is also in there now. Number 87, the two tight end offense for Dallas. First and 10, the ball at their own 20-yard line. Newhouse, left side, big hole. Newhouse pounds out for a seven-yard gain to about the 27. It will be second down and three. Hit there by Ed Simonini, who is the middle linebacker of the Baltimore's defense. 17th overall in the NFL last year. Ninth against the rush. There they are. Front four, a healthy front four. They weren't at the beginning of last year. Those are your linebackers. And a good secondary. Norm Thompson at one corner. At the other corner, Doug Nettles. Nettles, of course, a change of starters. A defensive right corner back for the Colts. Second down and three. Tony Dorsett. Dorsett has the first down. I think he'll be ruled down before he coughed up the ball. It was Doug Nettles who came up there and laid it on Dorsett. He did appear to have the yardage for a first down. Yes, he does. Frank, I think Dandy touched on the key point about Baltimore in the opening of the show when he said they're susceptible to the run. In average yards per rush, the Cowboys were fifth a year ago in the league. The Colts on defense allowed 4.25 yards per rush. They ranked 24. So as Dandy said, the Cowboys will be running. At their own 31, first and 10 for Dallas. Inside handoff. Dorsett, good defensive play. Moving across the line of scrimmage. Number 76 was Joe Ehrman. Gain of a yard. Second down and about nine. Tony Dorsett. Rookie of the year in the NFL last year. Over 1,000 yards rushing. The exciting player. Set Dallas records for runs from scrimmage. He had a couple of beauties. 12 touchdowns overall on the season. A great year for the Heisman Award winner out of Pittsburgh. Second down and nine. Ball up to 32. Starback, his first attempt of the night. Goes to Tony Dorsett, and Dorsett holds on. A flag is down as Dorsett is down at the 36-yard line, short of the first down. Stan White, one of the fine linebackers of Baltimore, covering Dorsett. Indication is going to go against the Baltimore Colts. Our referee tonight, Jim Tunney. He was in Denver yesterday, made a lot of time. Illegal shock, defense.
First down. You're going to hear this many times at the beginning of the season. Those defensive backs are just not used to the new rule that allows them only to hit one time or ride the receiver within five yards. You can't touch them when they go five yards down the field, and Doug Nettles obviously has not become accustomed to that new rule. It's going to make for long touchdown passes. We saw it yesterday, and quite frankly, it's a bit of a safety device that was considered that, as well as adding offense to the NFL, considered that by the NFL players and management committee. The competition committee had that in mind. You're right about that. And Wesley Walker's touchdowns against Miami proved what you just said. First and ten for the Cowboys. They're on 37-yard line. The motion man, Tony Hill, an exciting athlete. Inside handoff, Newhouse working against the grain. Fools no one in the Baltimore defensive front four. Squeaks out maybe a yard. Ed Simonini, Joe Herman in there on the stop. It'll be second and nine. They're running left at the moment behind Donovan and Scott with the help of Fitzgerald at center, of course. You just looked at Bobby Newhouse's statistics. But if there is a weakness on Dallas, we'll have to keep our eyes on Andy Frederick, second-year man, number 71, who has to handle Fred Cook. Again, all pro. Second down and nine for the Cowboys. Play action fake, stop back, draws a crowd out of the air. Ball and he throws it into a crowd. It's picked off. Norm Thompson. Baltimore with their second break of the ball game. And Thompson comes back to the 40 yard line. Saw back under a lot of pressure, hung it up for grabs, and Thompson accepted downfield and returned it to the 40. Frank told you before what a first great player Norm Thompson is. He was great as we look at it again. Dandy, why don't you take over? Well, on that, Howdy threw a bad ball, which is so unusual for Roger to do. It was uh, it was a short yardage situation, but they we really didn't get it close. So the only thing you can say, he just threw a bad ball, and we'll come back and see why. Uh, All right, how would you see, right? Roger got hit pretty good. I don't really know what the mix-up was. He didn't have that much time to throw. You see Barnes coming in there. Cook was in there. That was, you mentioned that we're going to have to be taking a look at Andre Frederick. That was Cook's man. Barnes came in from the other side over Donovan. Baltimore's second break of the game. Dallas fumbled the opening kickoff. They couldn't capitalize. They get the interception and moving for about three yards. Roosevelt leaks. It'll be second down and seven. The ball at the 37-yard line of the Dallas Cowboys. Now, you guys were saying a while ago, and I, and I understand why you want to probably play it conservative with a rookie quarterback, but I think when they come into a game like this, they've got so many unknowns and so many players that are missing, and they know Dallas is a really conservative kind of team. I would go out for them right quick and throw the ball, do whatever. I wouldn't run around the middle. I'd try to get some points on the board quick. The question mark is number 15, Mike Kirkland, basically a rookie out of Arkansas. Having to go with quarterback, he hands off to Don McCauley. McCauley upset Harvey Martin, who is working against another another basic rookie, number 69, Wade Griffin. And it's kind of a one-sided duel involving this man. He might be the best defensive end in all of football. You know, right now, when you talk, you, nobody runs against them very well. And uh, they sure are going to run against Harvey. Harvey right. didn't move him, he didn't move a muscle right there. He kept moving right back in the You market. play into the hands of the flex defense, which we'll deal with later if you run. Run, run, especially on first down. The way to take Landry's computer is to use it in your favor. We'll third, explain more later. Frank. Third down, seven. Kirkland, his first attempt. Going to Marshall Johnson. Incomplete. Fourth down. <laughs> that was their prevent, which they call a 4-0. There's not really a linebacker. They take Brunick and uh, B.D. Lewis out of there. And they really can double everybody that way. They put... They take, take them short, they take them long, and that's when they only use that thing in the short yard in a long yard situation. So he waited until an obvious passing down to throw his first pass. David Lee, the gray beard of the Baltimore Colts, he's been here five years more than any other Baltimore player. He set the punt for Baltimore. Butch Johnson playing a short safety, anticipating the attempt by Lee out of bounds. Trying to draw the penalty. They don't get it. Fair catch. Called for, but not made, obviously. But Johnson lets it drift into the end zone. He just wanted to slow down the defensive team coming downfield. So Baltimore has two breaks. They capitalize on neither. The score remains scoreless. We'll be back in a moment. Frank Bird. Well, Don Meredith. Glad to be back with you again as Monday Night Football is kicking off with... Well, quite frankly, a game that we had looked forward to all the offseason. However, Baltimore 
really decimated by the injury to Burt Jones. Lydell Mitchell, of course, gone to San Diego. They received Joe Washington. We haven't seen him yet. We might see him on kicks. They have been given two breaks. They could capitalize on neither. First and ten for Dallas. The ball at their own 20-yard line. Inside handoff, and Newhouse ducks one rushing Baltimore Colt, turns back to the middle and runs into a group, headed by number 78, John Dutton. Yeah, Loss of a yard will be second down 11. Mike Barnes was in there 63 first and slowed him up and Dutton killed him off. So thus far, Mike Barnes is playing a whale of a game. That's twice he's had a call. Barnes made a good move just then. As uh, a while ago, on the other side, we had Cook. I mean, uh, John Dutton made a quick move into the inside, too. We'll see if they don't come back up. Second 11, draw play. Tony Dorsett, left side. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, tacks on a couple more. It'll be a third down and eight. Stan White and Joe Ehrman in there defensively for Baltimore. Stan White, an opportunistic linebacker who has excelled at the intercept in recent years from Ohio State. Always around the football, or so it seems. I'll tell you, he excels. He has 23 interceptions in seven years. He's always there. Passing down for Staubach. He was rushed a similar situation and through the interception. Now out of the shotgun. A lot of time. All right. Preston Pearson. He's the man the Cowboys always like to bring in. Third and passing yardage. And Pearson gets the Cowboys out of trouble. He First down up to the 43-yard line. They always bring him in on the passing down. I think this is Cook that kind of jumps over. Let's see, they did a little crisscross there in the middle. Let me check that number. No, that's Barnes. Barnes that comes over. Since a little delay pattern that comes in there, it's used by, I really think, most of the successful offensive teams to utilize that back that comes out there late. Minnesota probably does it better than anybody. It's amazing the way Preston is always there on the third down, as Frank mentioned. The only non-cowboy, right. along with Seption, their kicker, that wasn't drafted or a free agent for Dallas. Preston Pearson getting the call. Newhouse, right side. Met there, met hard by a really rugged defensive unit of the Baltimore Colts. And I said it at the top of the show, and Don Howard, you've seen it over the years, a team hit with problems, often in many sports, will play just a little bit over their head. And defensively, the Colts are doing that. I think it might be true, Frank, and it probably is, but I also know that Dallas... In the first stages of the ball game, and particularly early in the season, they don't really show a lot of anything fancy. It's just basic. They're hitting to the left, to the right, trying to find something that might loosen up. Second and nine, the ball of the 43 of Dallas. Tony Dorsett, an opening lookout. Dorsett has the first down. He's in Baltimore territory, 47-yard line. Finally dropped by Lyle Blackwood and Norm Thompson as Tony Dorsett went over the right side. Andy Frederick, who is replacing the retired Ralph Neely, number 71 on that side providing one of the blocks along with Tom Rafferty. That's a pretty good holes over there wouldn't you say? Ooh, it just knocked it out. I had uh, lunch with Ralph as a matter of fact today and he was talking about this offensive line and Rock Tom Rafferty in particular and he says that he is going to be really one of the good ones. He thinks Pat Donovan's one of the best offensive tackles in football right now. That's saying a lot. It really, really is. Really. Yep. The first and ten inside the 47-yard line of Baltimore. The motion man is Drew Pearson. Starback floods back to the left, looking for an individual coverage. He doesn't get it. And the attempt to Tony Hill, covered well by Norm Thompson, and he got some assistance back there from number 40, Bruce Lair. Now, you might want to know about Tony Hill. This much you know. When Landry starts to brag about a player, and he's been bragging unceasingly about Tony Hill, he's got to be exceptional. Like most rookies under Landry, he sat in the bench last year. He comes from Stanford. He's a second-year man. He hasn't, you're looking at Mike Kirkland now, he hasn't dropped a pass in the preseason. And he had to be extraordinary. Watch this now. Watch Starback unloading. I'll tell you, they're getting to it. Well, it's all oh, kind of legs. Oh, well, that's Urban. Go Urban again. Go Urban. And I didn't see that. I was watching the thing, too. He got him. Second down, 10. Look out, look out. pressures. And he got it again. Forces Staubach into trouble. He misses on the attempted screen. Now, look for a lot of that tonight. That's why we told you about Cook against Andy Frederick. All Cook right. is one of the quickest defensive ends in the game. The thing you got to do, well, he's right over. You don't go down on your, on your knees like that. He's trying to throw a cut block. All you really want him to do is just slow him up. So stand up, hit him just a little bit, and hold him off. I'd have the conversation with that boy right there. I said, look here now. Let me tell you I something. I think Tom will when he looks at the... And I imagine Roger will too. 
Roger getting little or no respect from Baltimore tonight. Third down and ten. The ball is still inside the 47. Roger drops to the shotgun. Out to the left, Drew Pearson. Billy Joe Dupree. Preston Pearson, number 26, also in there as a wing back. There's a lot of time, and a man is open. And Preston Pearson again. That's right. Oh, he's and blown it. it touch. Finally, and it was oh. far downfield. So oh. oh, no. Preston if we look Pearson at the red touch. I'm sorry, Frank. Ray Oldham was defending. Well, now the debate. Did he drop the ball? Was he touched? Oh, yeah. Yep, he got the touch it. team goes down, down right there. Now, you will consistently explain that, Frank, in past games. He touched the man. The man was down. And so... Play was ruled dead at that point. Been a lot of conversations about the violence and how to correct it. I think in that particular that area, general area, where a guy is down or not down, is one area that it can be controlled a little bit more. Because the guys come in and they do take a shot when the guy is obviously not going to be able to make any more yardage. Fourth down, Dallas will go for that. And by the way, that was the seventh official who's been out of this year that made that call. No other official saw it. Sides. Newhouse has the first down in any event at the 30 yard line. Flag down. You saw Ehrman, or rather Mike Barnes, number 63, move across the line of scrimmage. I look for him to have a really outstanding year this year. Newhouse, I'm talking about for a couple of reasons. One, obviously, he's got Dorset back there, and they're going to be keying on him. That's not Robert Newhouse or Dorset, but. I think he will have a good one. He's the kind of guy that just seems to, he's a good blocker, very consistent, makes those short yardage situations, and he's awfully hard to bring down. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> How you been, Howard? Down I'll buy it. Three and one on the preseason. Baltimore one and three on the preseason. Dallas lost to Houston. Baltimore only beat Detroit. On the first and ten, the ball goes to Dorsett. Bounces to the outside. Not a bad move. Uh -oh. <laughs> Nifty move. Dorsett to get away from Sanders Shriver. And he turned it, what appeared to be a loser, into a three yard pickup. All right. That was also a heck of a good play here, by Don. John Dutton, number 78, that came in there. But Shriver is having his hands full catching it. And Urban caught up with it. Good pursuit down the line. Looks like John Travolta. You bet. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Well, somewhat. Frank just did, and I just said, you bet. 11th play for Dallas. Four yard pickup for Dorsett. Second down, six yards to go. Ball inside the 27 yard line. Motion man, Tony Hill, sets into a wing position. Dorsett, reverse to Tony Hill. He could throw. He can throw. And there he goes. Short. And fools nobody that he, oh, he dropped. Does not hold on in the end zone, intended for Drew Pearson. Tom loves that play, doesn't he, Don? Yeah, I was talking to Ermel Allen, uh, uh, buddy. Ermel said, if they ever get into this, he actually told me that uh, Pearson was going to throw it. He didn't tell me Tony Hill. If he waited just a little bit more and got in there behind Scott, he threw a little bit off balance. He was open there for a little while. Let's You're see what Pearson, he's going to try to lull him to sleep. Don't you imagine Frank in the inside? <laughs> he looked like he was caught with his hand in the cookie jar. He yep. didn't fool anyone. It was a good move by Bruce Laird, though. He saw that outside move, key number 40. Third down seven. Howard Reed said Landry loves that play. Remember the Super Bowl? Robert Newhouse, Golden Richards, that put it on ice. 27-10 over Denver. Out of the shotgun. Saw back. Oh, oh to that. the man who never lets go. Is that wild? Drew Pearson. I'm telling you. Was that Pearson or was that Hill? Drew Pearson, and he is still down. Man, did he, that was some kind of catch. I'll tell you, while you were vacationing, we talked, watch him again. We talked as we watched Drew Pearson about the fact that the real science of drafting begins with the third round. It'll be second down and seven. Boy, you talk about lightning. This little man, Howard Don, he can put some moves on like you've never seen. Well, Don said Dallas doesn't show a lot in the early stages of a season, and the record year in and year out backs him up as we look at the man who can't smile and think at the same time. <laughs> but, and we look at the beleaguered one, 
Teddy Marshabroda, who's gone through all kinds of terrible situations in the preseason. One setback, Robert Newhouse. Second down, seven. Two tight ends are in. Newhouse gets the ball. Left side, big hole. Nice. Look at Newhouse bouncing away from Ed Simonini. To restore our normal quality service at any moment. As we work to restore the quality of our signal, we will continue our normal programming. First game, and they look like a championship team. 15th play coming up. First and goal, the ball at the five-yard line. Dorsett, losing yardage, hoping to make more. Doesn't pay off, and he's taken all the way back close to the 10-yard line as Lyle Blackwood comes up there from his safety position. That's the kid who shocked us all last year as we look at Tom again, the duo one. Blackwood came up with, what, 11 interceptions last year to lead the NFL, Frank? At the NFL, and he was a cast-off in Seattle. TCU boy. Over here at Fort Worth. Did you know that? Well, yeah. You probably knew I'm that. I'm not thing. sure. It's relevant. Well, well I just thought I missed it. He's close at home. He likes to play this kind of weather. Second to go. The ball back at the sideline. Tony Hill goes left. Drew Pearson goes right. Back to the double back. Ball back. Screen pass. Newhouse. Newhouse gets away from number 40. Bruce Laird somehow stayed on his feet, gets a down to the one yard line. And what do they call him? A revolving doorstop. <laughs> I don't know. Revolved on this one. They wanted to kill me because I said it was no Calvin Hill a few years ago. Uh, but this is as good an evidence of balance as you'll see. Look at that yardage pickup, Don. That, well, yeah, that, he's just still, that is really wild. Now, you're right, he's not a Calvin Hill. Calvin retired this year. I, I would have said Would you that. believe that he called Tex Rand, wanted to come back? Yeah, I believe that. Third and goal, the ball up a one, no score. Inside one minute remaining in the first quarter, Dallas grinding it up. Saw back, rolls out his receiver, falls down. He uh, wanted to go to Saldi, Jay Saldi, the tight end, play action fake, Saldi slipped out to the right, and came, it would have been an easy touchdown. Watch Saldi. He's from South Carolina. Attempt the field goal. For Dallas. When he puts it down, I don't believe it. On the top line the other day, was too close. Apparently, he misses from the. <laughs> I don't believe it either. We'll be right back in the uh, Texas Stadium in Irving. Medical coaches of only on to New York. Short Raphael Septian from one yard out. That's a, he got him a yard field goal. <laughs> got in a little close, I guess. He kicked well for the Rams last year. A friend Herrera held out for the Cowboys this year. They let him go. He went to Seattle. They signed Septian. Was that a bad kicker, quite frankly? Oh, well, a great inside the 40. Where, oh, where Where is signed him out Herrera? Wednesday. On first and ten. Bull for about a yard, a yard and a half. Uh -huh. Well, Marshall Brothers going to play it his way, Don. Well, I, I think he should. He's coach. Can you get a direct line down to him? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> I talked to old Dick Bielski and Max Ivan. I know a couple of those guys. Let's see how they're doing. Leach gets a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight. Baltimore with what should be the final play of the first quarter and still no score. See some strange happenings. McCauley, all up as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. His weight, force carries him ahead for about a yard. It'll be third down and seven, and that is the end of the first quarter. Baltimore missing on two opportunities. Dallas missing an unheard of eight-yard field goal attempt is scoreless. Back in Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas, located just outside of Dallas. Sell out crowds, over 65,000. Third down, seven. Baltimore has the ball, their own 23-yard line. They're looking for their first first down. They haven't made one yet. Marshall Johnson is moving into the backfield as Donald gets the ball. He gets out the yard line where it'll be third. Well, now they've adjusted the marker. It'll bring up fourth down. Septian kicked 16 of 18 last year inside the 40, Frank. Well, what was he inside the two, guys? I, I think he was. He, 
Well, it is. Frank made a point. That get, they get so close, it's just hard to kick them down there. That's what it was. <laughs> Should have taken a five-yard penalty. That's Many right. teams do. Right. David Lee will punt. Butch Johnson is deep for Dallas. Butch Johnson, fine return man. And they put two men back. They're probably going to go for the block. And sometimes they'll put Tony Hill back there, too. Hey, Pock ran out, and... And they caught it. They, they caught him, and it's going to be five yards. That was old Tom Henderson, wasn't it? He oh, was yeah. on the clock. They probably were trying to get the five-yard penalty, and that was going to go. Still fourth down. We may yet see Tom Matty come back tonight, <laughs> old number 41, with the plays on the cup. I played in that game when he came in, and we forgot that he didn't play defense. Maybe it was 35 to 3. <laughs> All right, they could not draw Dallas off. This time they'll kick away from five yards further out. David Lee hangs one up. It doesn't turn over. Flex Johnson will try on the sidelines. Good catch. And he tight rope down the sidewalk. Down the sideline goes Butch Johnson. He... Picked up about nine yards just with his own skill. He was right on the sideline, and he moves all the way down to the 40-yard line of Baltimore. Those stats give you some indication of Marsha Broda's game plan, which is to try to stay close. <laughs> but you can't win that way. Look at time of possession. That's really wild. You know, another thing Baltimore did all preseason, pointing toward this game, they weren't showing any offense at all, no multiple sets. No, nothing to their outside receivers who only caught five between them, Carr and Dowdy. And they lost their quarterback last week, so they had to adjust. This is their set on first and ten, and he has a first down at the 35-yard line. Bruce Laird made the stop. You know, I was talking to... Uh, I wasn't talking to Harvey Martin there. What's Harvey? He's not hurt or anything, is he? No, no, he looks good. He's just eager. That's the kind of running play that Dallas has been able to really put in their offense now that Dorsett is here and it's it's a more a lot of more of the zone straight ahead kind of blocks and allow him to move and pick their holes and they've never really had that kind of back to give that free that, that freedom with that flexibility and certainly he's been able to take advantage of it and Dorsett by the way is going to have a simply tremendous year the Cowboys were frankly worried about him success had come to him too quickly and they worried about his personal life but this young man has settled down and he's going to be one of the great ones in the history of the league. I lied to you a little bit. You saw how much. A second down and inches. The ball at the 35-yard line. New outs. Yep. He'll get Correct. The My air moves down to the 37-yard line. Dallas. Dallas first down. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited, so don't use it. Frank, they're going into their two tight end situation on a first down. They put Saldy and they've got Billy Joe Dupree and they took uh, Hill out. Strong running situation. You know, I think Rodgers was getting impatient. He watched for him to unload that thing in the end zone pretty soon, too. And maybe he'll throw off of this. On first and ten. There he goes. Play action. And there he is open. Flip. Nice. Oh, and intended for Drew Pearson incomplete defending back there number 40, Bruce Blair. That's strange a to see Pearson drop that one, Don. A nice route. Look how he just kind of weaves his way around in here, and he comes back in, jumps right there, and, and uh, slides. He just didn't catch it. That's Calvin O'Neill, number 51, they had in there at linebacker, just right in the middle. Good. Quite You're hand. a student of Bobby Dillon, the times, they are a changer. Boletnikov, Casper, and Branch all dropped passes yesterday there, and probably Bob Dillon would, too. Bill Pearson. Over 230 receptions over the last five years. You don't see him drop passes like that. Gives Roger a second down and 10. Ball at the 33-yard line. There's your little screen. Look out. Newhouse and Newhouse. Well played. Hill moving up quickly from the defensive cornerback. Turning it inside, Norm Thompson and making the stop. Darrell Luce, number 58. Joe Ehrman in there also. Loss all the way back to the 35-yard line. It'll be third down and 12. Screen passes either work or don't work, depending on how good of actors you got up in that offensive line. They left too soon, showed the play too quickly, allowed that defense to move out there with them. Sometimes it can be the key play in your offensive category. It used to be with Paul Brown when he had Jimmy Brown on the receiving end. And Bobby Mitchell, too. Tony Hill right. 
Pearson is in the backfield of the wing back. Out of the shotgun on third and 12. Nobody with Dorsey. Over there, there's nobody with Dorsey. And oh, oh going to be picked good. off down at the 15-yard line. Number 43, Norm Thompson gets his second of the night. Man wide open, Tony Hill just short of the end zone. Roger apparently being harassed back there, did not see him. So... Pickoff by Lloyd Mumford helping Norm Thompson, but Thompson gets the interception. Tom Landry, the only coach the Cowboys have ever had. Been in the playoffs 11 of the last 12 years. Not a losing season since 1966. But he's having his problems tonight. I guess the shuffled Baltimore Colt team that is battling furiously defensively, but they can't move it on offense. First and ten from their own 15-yard line. Don McCauley, right side. And McCauley is met there by Vinnie Barnes, number 31, who comes up from the left cornerback spot. Just stood there and waited, read the play immediately. No chance for a game. Charlie Waters was up in there, too. I was talking to some of the guys, and Waters takes in a regular season if you're, the games are on schedule. He takes four hours on Thursday night, and he goes through the defensive computerization, and he's the guy that really calls the plays back there, and he's the guy that really does key the offensive formations better than anyone. He read that one extremely well. He and Barnes were there about the same time. What a safety tandem, Cliff Harris and Charlie Waters. Gain of one by McCauley, second down and nine from the 16-yard line, and getting the call, Roosevelt leaks. Left side, forget about it. Jeff Dorpew is there. Harvey Martin moving out. Randy White. And Dallas knows now that Kirkland's not going to throw. So they're masked. And there's no way Baltimore is going to run against that. Jeff Rowe, according to Ernie Scott there. And it's funny, you know, guys will go along. They'll have a couple of, kind of you know, good years, but not great. But it's been, according to Ernie, by far Jeff Rowe's best training camp. They had to let a couple of good guys go. Bill Gregory was one of them. Third down seven. Could be a key to the Baltimore philosophy. Dallas is in a prevent defense, and Kirkland jumps it off. Oh, that's good. This is McCauley, and McCauley has the first down, and the flag goes down back at the 10-yard line. It's going to be called against number 75, I think. Dallas is pointing. Back in there, and he uh, he actually overran the play. Yep, it's going to be called against George Guns, who is now in his 11th year in the league out of Notre Dame, one of the great offensive linemen, traditionally known as such, but a man suffering from a bad back. Frank, he has had his problems. He hasn't played at all in the preseason. Illegal use of hands, and of course, Coons tonight going against a pretty formidable opponent in Ed Jones. Here's the call. Illegal use of the hands, offense number 75 during the run. Half the distance of the goal line, third down still. Now, Mike Kirkland back inside his own 10. Third down, 15 yards. What do you do? Never played a minute in an NFL regular season game. Six of 24 in preseason. On the spot here tonight. You run a draw and then you punt. score in the game. Quick handoff. McCauley finds a big opening. McCauley gets out to the 20-yard line. Five yards short of a first down. Hit there by Cliff Harrison. Drop as Dallas was willing to give them the short yardage. They weren't going to give them anything else. That brings out David Lee and drops back. Puts Johnson for Dallas. There he is. 8-5 average. 150 returns last year. Here's Lee. Not a long kicker. Very accurate when he is kicking for out of bounds. He had to hustle this time. He gets out close to midfield. So David Lee being rushed by Randy Hughes. Kicks a short kick. Dallas will have the ball at midfield when we return. The great Howard, they have to miss him. He led the NFL in completions last year. He's a fiery kind of a quarterback, and he loves to play against Dallas. He's one of the best there is at the position. There's no question about it. Out, or they really don't know how long. An incomplete separation of the right shoulder. First and ten for Dallas, just short of midfield. Sawback, wide open is Tony Hill. And he puts a tremendous move oh, on Duck Nettles. And look out, and that's why he's starting against ahead of Golden Richards. That is something else. Oh, Lyle Blackwood oh. saves the touchdown, but 
How about the move he put on a fairly good tackler in Doug Nettles to break it loose? Looks like he's living off a little bit. That's why Tom Landry has been bragging on him all the preseason. This is one of those where you say, all right, let's get this thing rolling. Look we'll pick that. up five yards and we're going to go. And you're right. He did it all on his own. Another white jersey's down there. Remember, he beat out Butch Johnson, number 86, who was the hero of the Super Bowl. He beat out Golden Riches, who has been a solid receiver through all the years. He has been that high school, Long Beach Poly, where Gene Washington went, Stanford. He broke all of Washington's records there, and he might set a few here in Dallas before it's all over. 49-yard pickup, first and goal. There he goes. 21 is Doug Jennison, touchdown Dallas, and they get the goose eggs off the scoreboard at 8.57, remaining in the half. That's the way Dallas can strike, abruptly. That's Tony Hill from Stanford, the man who made it possible. And Tony Hill sat out all last year, Frank. You know the way Tom is with rookies. But this year, there was no holding him back. That was not a bad block, by the way, guys, by old Tom Rafferty. That guard who led that way in there, he kind of stood him up, too. Raphael set on. He missed one, a field goal attempt from a... Uh, well, uh, a yard in closer earlier to, I'm sure, his embarrassment. This one. <laughs> All right. Yeah, really, folks. This is what you were talking about, Don. Well, you got Billy Joe Dupree, who's the guy that really is heck of a block, number 89. You see Donovan. Look how far Donovan pushes those guys in. Heck of a block. Hey, that's Dorset out there blocking. And uh, he and uh, he took Nettles right off the tackle. Yes, sir. Well, Dallas on the scoreboard. 8.57 remaining in the half. Cowboys leading the Colts seven to nothing. Doug Dennison scores from the one yard line following a 49 yard Roger Staubach to Tony Hill completion, which was mostly Tony Hill. Set to kick off. Raphael Septian deep. Marshall Johnson in the middle, number 80, flanked by number 23, Don McCauley, and number 20, Joe Washington. Acquired from San Diego in the trade of Lydell Mitchell. It will be Johnson as he's driven into the end zone, and he'll bring it up. Good move. Johnson gets by Denny Barnes, and Seption saves it. All right. Well, Seption yeah. will get an ovation because Marshall Johnson was out of here. He has got plenty of speed, and he takes it all the way down to the 44-yard line. Now, that's the break ball the more needed. For the first time tonight, they've got field position. Let's see if young Mike Kirkland... Keeps running the ball into a mass Dallas defense, so finally begins to try to throw at least. You remember Marshall Johnson against Oakland in the playoffs. Ran one back 87 yards for a touchdown. Had a lot of problems with knees over the past three years, but he looked healthy on that one, and he gets Baltimore good field position at Dallas's 44-yard line. Kirkland going the slant, attempting to go to Dottie, incomplete. Denny Barnes right on top of Dowdy. Another one of those late defensive changes. You saw D.D. Lewis, number 50, run out and again, kind of put a double on the outside receivers. That puts a lot of pressure on that quarterback. They'll give you an opening, but boy, it's got to be right in the middle. There's D.D. Lewis out in front of Roger Carr. This is the real speedster that uh, two years ago had a great year. Now that's where he's got to come back. Only the five yards. Now Carr is coming back in there. Second down, 10. Roosevelt leaks 48, down the calling 23 to setbacks. Dowdy's in motion, and the toss goes to McCauley. Leaks with a block in front of McCauley, running well, breaking tackles, and the all-time leading rusher from North Carolina gets an eight-yard pickup out of the 37-yard line. Give him seven, it'll be third down and three. Pretty good block by Dowdy that time, number 35, coming back on old two tall. Closed off the inside a little bit, congested it, and enabled McCauley to get to the outside. McCauley came up back in 1971, second pick in the draft. Remember the first one? O.J. Simpson. Marshall Johnson goes out left. I didn't know that. Third and three. Pass of Kirkland behind Marshall Johnson. Too bad, just poorly thrown. He could have hit Johnson. 
who was running the slant. He was their leading receiver, wasn't he, in the preseason, Johnson? Mm -hmm. And he was also the leading. He led punt returns and kickoffs and stuff like that. He's a good athlete. Yeah. On fourth down, David Lee rolls out. Butch Johnson drops back. Positions himself at his own 10-yard line. There he is. These guys haven't made a first down yet. Another punt that was hurried by David Lee. Oh, and this is taking a good Baltimore bounce down around the one-yard line. That's pretty. David that, Lee, he did it 19 times last year. That's the way you can kill a team. John James did that yesterday for Atlanta against Houston. The coffin corner kick, which has come more and more into vogue, which used to be a very big thing in college football back in the 30s. Principally off the quick kick. I know June which, Jones do yesterday. He did quite well. Read a Houston blitz. You'll see him on a halftime highlights. Caught Bubba Bean all alone. Made over the, the tying touchdown. Oh. On the halftime highlights, you'll see that stunning upset of the Vikes by the New Orleans Saints. The stunning upset of the Dolphins by the New York Jets. 7.40 to go until halftime. Cowboys leading Baltimore. 7 to nothing. They'll begin from their own one-yard line. Good kick, David Lee. Starback, play action fake. Uh -huh. Tony set. Dorsett gets it out close to the 10-yard line. Tackled there by Doug Nettle. Short of the first down by about a yard, a yard and a half. I like that, Roger, the Dodger. I like him for so many reasons. A, he's a great athlete. B, he's a great person. Tell you this, on June 29th past in Minneapolis, Minnesota, they ro roasted Francis Talkington for the benefit of American, the American Diabetes Association. Raised $180,000 all told. You know who showed up? Roger the Dodge. Took his lumps, too. A uh, good look at him. Surveying a uh, second down, a yard and a half. Hands off to Dorsett, and Dorsett is oh, down. Okay. Hustling across Mike Farns, number 63. NFL Players Association picked Mike Barnes as the line of the year in 77. Well, he had his buddy Dutton in there with him, too. That front four of Baltimore, they're, well, they're solid. What do they call them, the sack pack or something like that? They had a couple of things that went wrong last year. One of the guys was a little down in the back, had a broken arm by Ehrman, but they still put it together pretty good. They're really good at rushing the pass. Lost to the yard. Third down now, a long three. Saw that. Ball deflected, but he's still caught there by number 33, Tony Dorsett. And it's look out. Ah, look out. All right. Dorn right. Thompson misses. It should be all over. It's all over. All right. 91-yard touchdown. Dorsett <laughs> being congratulated. There's not a cold in the area. Ball was deflected, was it? It sure was. It didn't appear it would even get to Dorset. When you see this in replay, Don, watch. Watch Dorset. Hold position. There it was. See it deflected? Almost. Oh, he almost got it again. That's right. His vision was blocked on the ball. He held position, picked it off, and from there on in, look at that move. Boy, is he a sweet little runner. Oh, he's not bad. He all not fluid, bad. all grace. There you go. Give me five. Let's dance on them, darling. Dallas strikes quickly once again. 91-yard touchdown pass. Starback. Tony Dorsett. Raphael Septian on for the conversion. Good. So the inevitable is beginning to happen. Let's take another look. It's worth watching. Starback throwing right in front of his own goal line. Deflected, touched twice, I believe, and away he goes. Look at that. I will get on him because that ball didn't spiral. Norm Thompson, I don't think he even touched him. Just grabbed a handful of air. Ah, uh, yeah. See him shake the hand of his teammate as he moved it on in. Cowboys, 14, Colts, nothing will be back. Baltimore with two early opportunities. They couldn't capitalize. Dallas stammered around for a while, and they finally hit on two big plays. A 49-yard pass to Tony Hill and a 91-yard touchdown pass to Dorsett. It's 14 to nothing, and here comes Don McCauley running back kickoff, doing a little bit of everything tonight on an injury-riddled Baltimore Colt team, and McCauley gets out to the 29-yard line where Baltimore will try and get back in it. They really, quite honestly, do not have the weapons to do so. They don't. They're in chaos no matter how they try to protest otherwise. Look at that. 
the loss of Lionel Mitchell, one of the premier players in professional football, for whatever reason. Joe Washington probably will see his greatest service. The guy that got for Lionel is a kick run. Man on the spot, young Mike Kirkland. 6'1", 184 pounder, third year out of Arkansas, playing in his first pro game. Hands off, McCauley. McCauley goes out to the 32-yard line. Gain of two, it'll be second and eight, hit by Bruning. 53, Harvey Martin, 79. Don, explain why you play into Dallas's hands against the flex defense when you consistently run on first down. No, I don't have any way, I don't have any idea how to explain that, but I, I imagine that it's not much that much easier to throw against them. You know, it's one of those, I mean, a rock and a hard place. It's what you have to do. Yeah, I, well, you, you're going to get so far behind in a little while, they'll really get panicky, and Dallas can go into that prevent defense, but the amazing thing is they have really no first downs and only 37 yards rushing. Second down, eight. That was the number one defense in the NFL last year. Third against the pass, second against the rush. Look out, hit. That Too tall. Makes Kirkland throw it high, and that gave the defensive area That's led by Tom Henderson a chance to get to McCauley before he could get to the ball. I honestly believe there is no better athlete in football today than Tom Henderson. We've talked about him in the past years. He runs like a halfback. He has tremendous speed. And he used to be used, as you look at him there, by Tom Landry on kickoffs. He would take the ball on a reverse. Some years back, he broke one for a touchdown. And in the Super Bowl game against Pittsburgh, which Dallas did lose, on the opening kickoff, he set up Dallas's first touchdown by running it back on the receiving end of a reverse into Pittsburgh territory. Third down, seven. Holly and Marshall in the backfield. Kirkland, he's got it. He'll get the first. A first down. And Good steps move. out of bounds at the 46-yard line. First down, Baltimore. Mark Washington up there threatening. Uh, they'll choose somebody out because there was nobody over there. Somebody's supposed to stay home. Good move by Kirkland, though. He's never going to. He saw a big open there. Had to run with it. By the way, if you want to watch Dallas develop later in the season, you'll have the chance right here on ABC. Not once, but twice. We'll be back in the big day for Minnesota against Dallas, and we'll be in the national capital for Dallas against Washington. You know, Curtin still has the Arkansas record for the longest run from scrimmage, 91 yards. Just thought I told that in. Okay. He won the pass, punt, and kick. When? I Ten years ago. Ten years ago. ago. I think I'm right here. Right here. The first and ten. Baltimore's first first down from their own 41-yard line, and they run out of time. Too much time once again. Mike, Mike is calling his own plays, we were told, and they were get some assistance from the sideline and the, not messengers, but I guess that wiggle waggle or whatever it is. Stop. I have news. Stop. The Cowboys' longest pass play in history was 95 yards. It was from Don Meredith to Bob Hayes. Yeah. Tonight, you saw the second longest, 91 yards. Stop back to Dorset. Oh, you were something, Don. Yeah. Well, I threw mine a lot further than Who Bob. caught it? <laughs> I don't know. I just threw it up. So y'all go tell get you, it. When you had number 22 to throw to, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> it was not bad. Bob Hayes. <laughs> oh, that is right. Five-yard penalty. First down, 15. The ball inside the 41-yard line. Five minutes remaining in the first half. Baltimore trailing the Cowboys, 14 to nothing. Look out, look out, Mike. Oh, boy. Kirkland attracts everybody. 50 D.D. Lewis is there. That Thomas Henderson again, too, I think, wasn't it? Yep. Hugh is there. Henderson. But I'll tell you, through all the years we've watched D.D. Lewis, they were writing, watch D.D. They left a blitz on second and long. You see that Henderson just delayed there a little bit, mm. and that's in order to make that offensive line or blockers commit. He's got that extra speed that he can spot you half step, still beats you back there. They talked about it before. He ran a legit, unaided 9-5 up at Oklahoma State a few years back, and he weighs 220 pounds. You look at D.D. Lewis. What a guileful veteran. Second down in a bundle, 25 yards, draw play. Roosevelt leaks, and leaks gets out to the 38-yard line, gets some of it back. It'll still be third down and long. What you're going to see in the National Football League this year with a 16-game schedule as one studies the trouble to Marsha Broda is the team with the greatest number of reserves, the team that can best withstand injuries, and Burt Jones is an example. Emerging on top. Third down, 18. Dallas in a prevent. 
Randy Hughes comes in. He's number 42. Kirkland, down he goes. I could have almost guessed that because he had everybody screaming at him from both sides. Everybody's calling and yelling and telling him that he's in prevent, prevent defense. Man, you ain't got damn thing about nothing. I said, look out. Man. I got my own problems yeah, back here. Yeah, don't tell me your problems on the sidelines. You see it was in there? Our old friend Larry Cole. Oh, he's a good one, 63, and Tommy Henderson again, number 56. I read a thing in the paper about Larry Cole. They always gave for his one-liners. They say, why are you always... He said, I can't remember more than one line at a time. <laughs> David Lee will punt, puts Johnson is deep. 336 remaining in the first half. Lee hits one, and it turns over this time, and the drive puts Johnson inside his 20. Good coverage, and Johnson goes down at the 26-yard line. 47-yard punt. Ozdowski down there, number 71 for Baltimore. You look at Butch Johnson and you understand why Dallas has such a great football team. Why they're equipped to withstand injuries. Butch Johnson is one of the best receivers in the league. As I said, a star in the Super Bowl again. He thought he finally had golden riches displaced. Now he finds Tony Hill ahead of him. When you got that kind of talent, so much of it, you can't fail to be up there. First and ten, Dallas. Look out. Marcet, look out. I said, look out. Maybe. No, nope, got the angle on him. Garcet out of bounds, out of the 28-yard line. Right Harrison, wasn't it? 47-yard pickup, and watch him accelerate now. He'll get on that sideline, Howard and Don, and watch him kind of coast and turn it on and, and try to get by them. Looked like Bruce Laird missed him right there at the first, and this is Dwight Harrison who had a pretty good angle on it. Knocks him out. There again, you see Dupree kind of just flirt with him going to the outside. That whole right side just knocked him in again. There's Pearson out in front. Key block, and I'm sure Tom is happy with it. Andy Frederick, number 71. You saw him. He moved him in, didn't he? Put Fred yep. Cook inside, and Dorset, Dorset was gone. Chuck Dennison will relieve Dorset for a moment, number 21. First and 10 at the 28 yard line. Saw back. Look out, God. Screen. Billy Joe Dupree. And Debris gets...